So let's talk about what you should do at the first sign of dementia. Now, what are the first signs of dementia? Number one, loss of navigation, spatial memory. Now, what is that? That has to do with locating yourself in time and space. So let's say, for example, you're trying to figure out where did I park my car? Or you're having problems with direction when you're driving somewhere and you're completely and utterly dependent on the GPS. All right, number two is um, it's taking you longer to find the right words. Number three, you're more easily confused. Now, of course, there's a lot of things in life that we're confused about, but if you just to compare your past to the present, is there some type of drop in clarity? I mean, that could be one thing. Number four, you're repeating yourself. Now, there's many other symptoms of dementia, but these are the early signs. Dementia in Alzheimer's is a situation where your neurons cannot get fuel anymore, specifically glucose, because there's either resistance of fuel going through the blood-brain barrier, or the neurons in the brain itself cannot get fuel anymore. So there's a problem with these synapses connecting. If the blood has glucose and ketones together, which is a different source of fuel. The brain will prefer and take as priority the ketones over glucose. So in other words, the preferred fuel of the brain is ketones, which is the byproduct of fat burning. And very rarely does an average person run their body on ketones. They're running their body on glucose, and then what happens, they start having insulin resistance and all sorts of issues, so now that doesn't work anymore. And so the most important thing you need to know is you need to start feeding the brain ketones, okay? Ketones will bypass this damaged mechanism of the glucose being absorbed and feed the neurons directly. So you're gonna notice a nice change in these symptoms for the better. So how do you increase ketones? Three ways. You lower your carbs, get on a healthy keto eating plan. You start doing fasting. I have a link down below of how to do intermittent fasting. Going on low carbs will increase ketones a certain amount, but when you're doing fasting, you greatly elevate the amount of ketones that the brain can use. Now, the other thing you can do as a transition step and to enhance this process is to start taking MCT oil, which will give you ketones directly. You can also take exogenous ketones in a tablet form. They're a little more expensive. This is a lot less expensive. Um, but the key is getting more ketones in the brain. That is gonna immediately start turning things around for you. Some other things that I would recommend, DHA. This is a healthy fat. It's an omega-3 fat, it's in fatty fish, it's in cod liver oil. A good portion of your brain is made from this. Zinc and vitamin B1, vital for supporting certain parts of your brain that can regenerate, like the hippocampus. So get your B1 from nutritional yeast, get your zinc from shellfish or a good supplement, or even beef or organ meats. It's much more bioavailable. But vitamin B1 and zinc directly support the hippocampus, which is part of the brain that is severely damaged when you have Alzheimer's. The other thing you have to realize is that if you have dementia, there's probably some hypoxia going on, which means that you have a lack of oxygen or part of the brain that's just not getting the blood flow it needs. So exercise is vital to increase oxygen, as well as doing hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And there's even a therapy of restricting the brain of oxygen while you exercise, but you would do that intermittently to increase oxygen, which will increase stress and cause your blood to carry more oxygen. So that's another therapy, but let's focus just on exercise right now and potentially doing the hyperbaric. The other thing that's really important is getting enough sleep. If you have a sleep problem, like sleep apnea, for example, that can create hypoxia and decrease the oxygen to the brain. Or if you're getting a lack of sleep, that instantly increases your risk for prediabetes, insulin resistance, 
and other health issues. And so one way to kind of reset your sleep patterns is to start taking vitamin D and take it probably minimally at 10,000 IUs every single day. And you're gonna find that you're gonna start sleeping better. That's just one thing, there's many things, but that can definitely help you as well as just taking vitamin D in general, which directly improves brain function. All right, there you have it. And if you want some uh, additional information, I have a lot of videos on the brain. Check them out, I put them down below. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.